Woodworking Business Secrets Starting and running your own wood shop profitably When I think back to my days as a woodworking business owner, there were lessons learned almost every day along the way. Lacking experience and a mentor meant learning things by trial and error. What I lacked in experience was trumped by a strong desire to succeed against all odds. And succeed we did. But you can avoid all those school of hard knocks lessons by applying these random tips from the beginning of your business journey. Number one, treat your business activities as a business from day one. This means you need to price your products for profit and account for every possible cost incurred. It's the only way you can succeed long term. Number two, place an emphasis on finding good customers and keeping them happy. This means making marketing and sales a priority in your business. As much as you enjoy time on the shop floor, that production time is ultimately better left to employees. So you can focus on attracting more business. This is particularly busy in the early days, but it's better for long-term growth and sustainability to always be marketing. Customers put you in business and keep you there. Never forget this. Number three, you need space and space is expensive. Don't lease more space than you need and only lease more space when you have months worth of work that warrants additional space that you can support. Working with your existing landlord often leads to the best deal when it's time to move up. Ask for flexibility with additional space should you need to scale back later. We doubled our space by taking over the unit next door. We carefully cut an opening in the dividing block and reinforced it with steel. When our additional work was complete, we reinstalled the block wall and vacated the extra space without any penalty. Try not to store any inventory whatsoever. Complete the job and ship it out. If the facilities aren't ready at the scheduled time, Someone, either a contractor, homeowner, somebody needs to find suitable storage or pay you storage fees. That's just the way it goes. Number four, labor is always going to be costly. Woodworking of almost every sort is labor intensive by nature. Typically, even more so for the small shop. There's no way around this other than to maximize your productivity and efficiency. Make every employee accountable and strive to eliminate waste at every opportunity. Focus each workday in 15 minute segments and you'll get more work value out of every hour. Encourage early starts and complete diversion at break time. This actually helps improve focus when it's time to get back to work. Number five, planning. Careful planning makes every project more successful. It doesn't matter whether you're making a simple piece of furniture or 1,000 Adirondack chairs. Account for every piece of material, allowing for waste and every piece of hardware too. Also remember to allow for things like sandpaper, sharpened saw blades, router bits, jig construction and configuration, as well as stains and finishes. All of these should be factored into the price of the product. Number six, network with other business owners. Get to know your neighbors, particularly if they're in the wood products business too. Be open to new possibilities. Consider joining your local Chamber of Commerce, Rotary Club, Kiwanis, 
or even Toastmasters. All are excellent opportunities to meet community leaders. Look for local meetup groups of business owners. All of the above are opportunities to share your brand and what you do with influential people in your own community. The more people you meet, the more opportunity you'll have to quote on specific projects in the future. Number seven, point out to potential customers why they should choose you. First things first, you're a caring professional who produces great work on time, every time. In so doing, you begin with quality materials and a best practices approach to woodworking. I found that there are three things customers pay attention to the most, and they are number one, materials, number two, joinery, and number three, the finish. If you're using solid wood edging where a competitor uses veneer tape, emphasize this. Show them the quality of your joinery by using a small drawer in a cabinet as an example. Let them feel the smooth finish and highlight the fact that you use three coats of clear coat lacquer while gently sanding between each coat. Quality sells, but never assume that others will know how much care and attention you put into building their furniture or cabinets. Follow these seven basic tips and your woodworking business will be up and running successfully from the start. Stick with these steps and the value of your business will continue to grow, allowing you to sell it for a healthy profit down the road, should you choose to do so. If you value these tips, please hit the share button below. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. That's the best way to get the latest tips and insights as soon as we share them. Also, if you want to kickstart your woodworking business, be sure to click the link below in the description.